This is Tom Recky and today I'm talking about how to start a walking program. You might have come here from my other video, the top 10 reasons you need to start walking and the results are unbelievable. There are great studies in the British Journal of Medicine and the American Journal of Preventative Medicine showing that cardio and weight bearing exercise are the best things you can do for muscle strength, long life, decreased mortality, bone strength, preventing osteoporosis, great hormones, great strength, everything. And I think for most people that come to see me, starting a walking program is the single easiest thing and best thing you can do to start improving your health. We're gonna give you the best tips, the best tricks to get started immediately and we're starting now. 99% of people will be in great shape to start walking immediately with the tips and tricks we tell you. But the reality is if you have a dislocated bone, if you have a severe health condition, like a herniated disc, a ruptured ligament, it may be necessary to see your podiatrist or your healthcare practitioner to get evaluated. And that's one thing I do, I check the feet the knees, the hips, the lower back. We evaluate if people have biomechanical issues. This is one of the most important things you can do before you start exercising and moving just to avoid injury. Adaption is very important. Ligaments connect bone to bone and tendons connect muscle to bone. This is an unbelievably important chart. It's an adaption, your percent adaption over time. Look at how long it takes nerve, muscle, bone, and fascia. So nerves, muscles, bone, and fascia to adapt. 30 weeks to start fully adapting to your walking program. Whereas ligaments, tendons, and cartilage, 60, 70, 80, 90 weeks. It can take almost one to two years to fully adapt your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, and your cartilage. So you have to set realistic time perspectives. The goal of a walking program is that it should be fun and long-term and something you can keep up, not something that you do for show or for the camera that you do for a week or two and give up. If you think you have an imbalance with your joints, it might be important to get evaluated. But number two, get a biomechanical exam check your back, your knees, your hips, your feet. My good friend, Ben, the knees over toes guy, my good friend, Dr. Triffin, who's a doctor of physical therapy that works with us in the videos and coach Ryan, who's a division one basketball star. We go over those guides below, so check that out. But like I said, 99.5% of people watching this video are gonna be in great shape to start walking. That's just more of a medical disclaimer. Address any areas that get sore. A lot of the times you could have stiff muscles, stiff joints, there's a lot of easy things you can start doing. The reason your joints get tight is because muscles are overwhelmed. They're filled with lactic acid. They're filled with fluid. They're just not gliding well. And the big problem is they're not strong enough to support your body. How do you get them stronger? You start moving. There's a good saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's really why walking is perfect. It's the single easiest thing to start doing. That's why this chart is so important. Your nerves, muscles, and bone and fascia will take some time, 10, 20, 30 weeks. We're not looking at a short time horizon. We're looking at a low, easy to start program that you get used to. And then you're gonna start feeling like a million bucks. Then as 60, 70, 80 weeks by the end of one year go by, that's when your muscles feel strong, your foot ligaments feel strong, and your knee cartilage can actually start to feel better. It is possible. There are massage guns, there are massage sticks, there's great massage chairs. In fact, when I get up in the morning, I have a great massage chair that I sit in. It loosens me up. I check my emails first thing in the morning and I'm loose, I'm ready to go. I hit my rowing machine. I go for some movement during the day. Start your day the same way. Massage gun can work well. Foam roller, braces as well to hold that joint straight. So there's a lot of easy things you can do. What you also wanna consider is if you have a hard time balancing, it's better to start moving than not moving and waiting. What I mean by that is, there's a lot of older people that watch this, consider support. A brace for your ankle, a brace for your knee, a cane, a walker. I have so many patients where they don't wanna get up and use their walker, but once they start using a walker, one week, two weeks, three weeks goes by, and then they don't need that walker anymore. Their strength gets stronger. You wanna to get to your mailbox and then potentially walk back. And then a week later, you can make it to the end of your street and back. And then a week later, you can go even further and back. And next thing you know, you're walking one mile, two miles every day, and your strength is getting a lot stronger. So don't be afraid to start with balance aids. Walkers on wheels can be really good too. 
There is barefoot shoes versus supportive shoes. For the average person starting a walking routine, I highly recommend more supportive shoes. There are definitely undeniable differences between wearing good supportive shoes and the barefoot shoes or barefoot walking. When you're barefoot walking, you're leaning forward more, you're taking shorter, more focused steps. So that means you're not taking as wide as steps. In some people, that takes pressure off your hips and your knees. But the trade-off is it puts more pressure on the ball of your foot, your ligaments, your joints, your tendons, which for some older people is not a good idea. So for example, as your muscles, bone, nerve, and fascia adapt and you don't have cushion, you impact and you have zero millimeters of cushion on your shoe. That means if the proper amount of time has not gone by, you're going to develop stress fractures, ligament ruptures, damage, whereas with a shoe, you have eight to 12 millimeters of cushioning. So that means at the beginning, that's easier to get used to. There's less of a transition time. But as that 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 weeks goes by, that's when it might make sense to get used to. There's really good brands like New Balance, like Brooks, like On, like Asics, like Saucony. For seniors, so the 65 plus crowd, I'm a very big fan of a brand called OrthoFeet. They're the number one brand of orthopedic shoes. They make great walking shoes with a pre-built soft insole. They are a great shoe to start wearing if you're just starting a program because they're cushioned, they're supportive. Now you want a shoe with some features. You want a stiff bottom of the shoe. You don't want it to be soft where it's bending like crazy. You want it to have a semi-stiff but cushioned heel and you want it only to bend where the big toe joint is. This is called Hoka. This is about as maximal as it gets. Now you don't need to go crazy and get a shoe like this even though these are highly recommended for a lot of people but you want a shoe with a supportive back. So it's cushioned and it's got a supportive back. When you sit in it, your foot's not sliding around. Number two, you have a lot of cushion through the bottom, but at the same time, that cushion is not foam that bends. See, it only bends through the big toe joint. A good rule that I always tell people is when you put your foot in the shoe, you wanna take your finger and essentially from the front of your longest toe and the front of the shoe, you wanna be able to squeeze your finger in. You don't need to do anything fancy sizing wise. You just wanna be able to fit your finger between the longest toe and the front of the shoe. That should give you enough space. Like look at the shoe, it's wide enough in the toe box. If you have a bunion, if you have hammer toes, it's mesh, it gets pressure off there. Make sure the back of your heel is feeling snug, that it's not slipping out in the front. Just take your thumb and make sure there's enough room to get one finger between your longest toe and the front of the shoe. You don't need a fancy measuring device. And make sure it's wide enough. Make sure your big toe's not bulging out the side. Make sure it's a soft, flexible material. And same thing for your fifth toe. Just make sure it's not poking out, that there's no stitches there. That's probably the number one problem. That has nothing to do with barefoot shoes or good supportive shoes. A lot of the brands I mentioned will cover that. Watch this. Without an insole, see how much my foot flattens down? But with an insole right here, the foot's not flattening down. That's not stretching your plantar fascia. It's not stretching your Achilles tendon. It's not putting pressure in the ball of your foot. An insole, it can take a week or two to get used to, but it's just so supportive towards your knees, your back, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. As with anything with the walking program, maybe start with the pair of shoes for a week or two, then start with the insoles in those shoes. Then as one week, two weeks, three weeks goes by, you're not as tight through your hips, your knees. You don't wanna change the way you walk completely all at once. There's a lot of great pre-made orthotics. Like I'm talking $20 or so. Shoes don't have to be overly expensive either. There's lower cost ones, but you wanna start with something cushioned and supportive. Get used to the shoe for one week, two weeks, three weeks, then get the insole in there, get used to it. Start with a low distance. So getting out to your mailbox, maybe to the end of your street. If your knees, your backs, your hip are tight while wearing the insert, it doesn't mean that it's a bad fit. It just means you need more time to get used to it. And the example I like to give is a dentist, when they put braces on a crooked tooth, they don't adjust it all at once. They put it on first, then adjust it a little bit, one month later, adjust it a little bit more. Then a month later, adjust it a little bit more. That way, hopefully it doesn't hurt. You're getting used to it. Your muscles are getting stronger. They're getting used to it faster. Because your tissues have to adapt, just like the shoe, you want to start with some support, some softness, some cushion. Otherwise, you're going to have problems to your muscle, your bone, your fascia. So just like we start with a more supportive shoe. So ideally, I recommend like that 8 to 12 millimeter lift. But adding an orthotic at the same time will provide more cushion, 
more support to that bottom of the foot when it impacts. But that's not all. Where the orthotic really comes in is the motions seen right here, rotation, compression, stretching of the ligaments. With the insert, it holds the Achilles tendon more vertical and it prevents overpronation. It prevents stretching of the shin splint muscles, the plantar fascia, the midfoot, arthritis through the ankle. It helps with all of these. You don't have to start with expensive custom insoles. And in fact, at my office, I have a 3D printer that can make these insoles for a very, very low price, basically cheaper than the prices of pre-made insoles online. So there's ways to do it. There are ways you could order insoles to your house. And I list my favorites down below. And then there's pre-made insoles. I go over that in depth in a video below exactly how to choose them. And I review all the pre-made brands. But the reality is just start with something cost-effective, soft, and then work your way up if you need it. For most people, a lower cost softer insole is a great start and you just have to get started. Don't use it as an excuse to stop walking. You don't need a perfect shoe and a perfect insole right away. That can come as you build up longer distances. When you go outside, you want to choose the right gear. Here living in Michigan and most people watching are in northern climates. So Europe, Russia is a common area, Canada, North America, United Kingdom. I do have some fans in warmer countries, but it's probably not the majority. So you want to get shoes and clothes that are warm enough. You want to be safe out there. You want to stay warm. And in fact, there's nothing wrong with walking on a treadmill. There's nothing wrong with walking inside. There's nothing wrong with staying inside on a treadmill. There's good shock absorption. It's consistent speed and incline. No weather dependency, but it's less challenging and it's more boring unless you have a good TV show to watch. But you want to invest in proper clothes so you won't slip. You want to have proper shoes with proper grip. The big thing is you want to start slowly. Most of the people watching this show are older people or people with injuries. Why else would you be watching a foot doctor channel? The thing is when you're a teenager, you can adjust to everything very quickly. Your muscles are elastic, it's strong, and you don't weigh a lot. But when you're older, we weigh more, our bones are weaker, our ligaments are weaker, our muscles are weaker, and we're generally more heavy. Most patients that I see, I tell them it takes six weeks to start a good walking program. You want to start off with some soft shoes, get used to them. You want to then get some soft insoles into those shoes, get used to them. Now you can go further with those shoes, further with those orthotics, and now you can potentially go to a more supportive orthotic. Maybe at the beginning you want to use a walker or a rollator. You want to potentially use a cane and you want to start with low distances. Potentially you want to start with a five minute walk the first day. The next morning you're going to feel pretty sore. Then you want to get used to that until that soreness goes away. Then you maybe want to do a 10 minute walk. As that 10 minute starts to feel good the next morning, now you can do a 15, 30 or more minute walk. Your muscles will get stronger and as four to six weeks go by, you can then potentially stop using the cane. Your hips feel stronger, they're more fluid, your knees feel better, they're more fluid, your ankles feel better, everything's just moving better. A good plan is to start slow. That five, six, seven weeks, don't start with an unsupportive shoe. Start with a good shoe, otherwise you're gonna get bone soreness, muscle soreness, fascia soreness right off the bat. Start with a cushioned shoe with a soft, gentle orthotic. You don't need a hard, restrictive orthotic. Get used to it. You can see as 10 weeks, 20 weeks go by, your fascia, your muscles are adjusting. The orthotic is preventing you from rotating, compressing, stretching, and then you could potentially go to a more supportive orthotic as your ligaments, your tendons, and your cartilage get used to it. If that's still not getting used to it, if you're having a hard time adjusting, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a walk, a cane, ankle braces, knee braces, massage sticks, massage back braces, or back massagers. I use them too. It warms me up in the morning. It's a great start. If six weeks go by and you still have severe aching or pain and you can't really get past that five minutes, that's when you want to see a podiatrist or a specialist. Get that joint, get that ligament evaluated. Maybe something's torn, maybe something's injured. But there's a great orthopedic surgeon that I work with and essentially he told me one thing. Knees and hips and feet and ankle. I stand by this by my joints that I work with as well. 
they only have one way to communicate by getting sore. It doesn't mean something's damaged. It doesn't mean something's ruptured. It could just mean the muscles are weak, they're overworked, they're swollen. And I would say 90 plus percent of the time in my experience, there's nothing wrong. You just need to condition yourself a little bit better. 10% of the time, something could be damaged. And that's usually sharp pain, ripping pain, pain that just does not get better with more activity over a period of time. Set realistic goals, set achievable goals. So the first couple of weeks, you wanna just go five, 10 minutes or more. But if you're like a healthy 20 year old watching this, maybe you can do an hour right off the bat, but track your mileage, set realistic goals. Know that it's gonna take you weeks to get used to them and that it's gonna take time to get stronger and build that time up. Don't get depressed. It takes long for everybody, but once you get there, you won't regret it. A great guy, I've talked on the phone with him lots of times, Ben, who's also known as the knees over toes guy, he likes to start off with backwards walking. So essentially, you just wanna walk like this, and you wanna walk like this. That works your thighs, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. That's a great warm up. He recommends five minutes of walking backwards. Potentially that might be too much for people before you go on your walk. You wanna incorporate some gentle stretching, like your hamstrings, your thighs, your calf muscles. I have a lot of great videos on hip, knee, foot, and ankle stretches that you can do, but I'll tell you, stretching is probably not the most important thing. Basically doing a reasonable backwards walk, some movement, and then getting straight into your walking is the way to go. For most people, walking is the warm up, and that's really all you need. Monitor your intensity and duration. Stay hydrated and stay safe. So in the morning, drink a little bit of water. Most people are dehydrated in the morning. You can carry it. Make sure you have a light if you're walking at nighttime. If you're walking in the morning, don't run into stuff. Incorporate variety over time. Sometimes walking up hills, sometimes walking up stairs, sometimes going to the park can keep things interesting. Call up a friend, go with a friend, keep a friend that motivates you. Listen to your body. A lot of the times that goes back to that sharp pain. It's normal to feel aching in your joints and muscles, but it's not normal to feel sharp radiating pain that gets worse. So if your pain is getting worse and worse every day, potentially come see a doctor, come get checked out. If you're in Michigan, I'd love to see you. And you don't have to make this painful. If you have excessive fatigue, take a break, see how it's feeling the next day, take a two day break, but don't start just sitting on the couch and getting weaker and weaker. And then if that's not working, you wanna come in to see a podiatrist like myself. And if you're in Michigan, I would love to see you. I usually follow with pre-made orthotics that I have available for free in my office in most cases to start off with. And then we have a 3D printer that can print custom orthotics a lot of the times for very cost effective rates, much cheaper than the pre-ordered ones even online. What I do is I do a biomechanical exam. I check your hips, your knees, your thighs, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. I bend your ankles up and down, your big toe joints up and down. I see where it's tight. What kind of adjustments do we have to make? And the thing is you can adjust them from appointment to appointment. You wanna look at your leg kind of like a dentist looks at a tooth. You don't wanna straighten that tooth all at once. You wanna take that tooth and get used to it a little bit straighter, a little bit straighter, a little bit straighter. And when your foot is now straight, that soft tissue gets used to it. Your hamstrings, your thigh muscles, your hips, your lower back over a couple months get used to walking straight. That's when walking barefoot makes sense. That's when strengthening your muscles makes sense. At first you want to just get used to walking straight and your muscles will adapt. Using this method, virtually 100% of patients that come see me do see improvement and there's no real risk. The cost does not have to be high. What's a 20 or 30 or $50 pre-made orthotic when you're weighing surgery as a result? And here's the real big secret. All of this stuff is around for a reason because it works. There's happy people and there's unhappy people with all of these. You just have to use it correctly. And the big secret with orthotics are nobody really makes a lot of money on these anymore. Compared to like a $20,000, $30,000 surgery for a hospital, why would the hospital advertise a pre-made orthotic? Why would the medical system advertise a $20 orthotic when they can make money on a $30,000 surgery and a patient for life? It's something you have to think about. And that's why there's not that many studies for orthotics anymore. The reality is, in my opinion, Opinion, orthotics work amazing. This stuff all works. The barefoot walking works, the orthotics, the good shoes, they all work, but they have to be used at the right time and the right sequence. I go over my favorite shoes, my favorite orthotics, and my condition specific guides. If you're in Michigan, come see me. But the big secret as well is you have to get a biomechanical exam. If something's hurting when you wear your orthotics, you have to get it looked at. Is it a bad knee, a bad hip, a bad foot? You might have to massage. You might have to use a 
foam roller. You might have to get physical therapy. You might have to get an injection. You might have to get shockwave therapy. Ungunk your body. Start walking straight. And if you want to walk straighter, check out my 30-day guide to transform your health. You won't regret it.